got the green monster ready. She was like this every day. We were very proud of her. Uh, 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 uh. I'd like to raise the sails again, watching for the whales again, and never have to say. I wish that I had done the things that I can't do when I'm too old to play. Nothing to it. Well, goodbye, Damarisk. I hope we get to see you again. As we're leaving the harbor, Brian's putting up the mainsail out of an abundance of optimism more than abundance of wind. Yeah, you don't have to be a sailor to be able to read the water here and see that there's just no wind at all. Nice to see the sun two days in a row. But just a few minutes later, a very gentle little breeze appears, giving the water a new scuff, a new set of wrinkles that hopefully will move us along enough to kill that engine. Let there be green monster. It's not much, but we're moving. Pretty pleasant. Guys, if you have a reluctant first mate, these are the conditions you want to take them at in initially. Once they've fallen in love with sailing, then you can show them that vigorous, splashy, exciting stuff. The ocean was like this every day, we were very crowded out here. I am super lucky to have an enthusiastic first mate in Muriel, although on a day like this, I think a kindergartner could take the helm. Monhegan Harbor is exposed to the south and southwest and can be very rolly, although that shouldn't be an issue today. And Muriel, once we're settled, I think we should walk up to that lighthouse up there. Well, that's a pile of traps. It seems to me, though, that the uh, Monhegan loftering season is not the normal one. They've got a different six months they fish or something like that. Oh, really? I'll have to ask somebody when that is. Well, I did ask, and their season begins on trap day, which is October 1st. The wharf is alive with activity, and the Monhegan lobstermen get busy fishing the coldest, darkest months of the year, getting up well before sunrise to load bait and frost-covered gear and head out under the stars to fish their traps. Monhegan lobstermen are conservationists at heart and do a really good job of self-monitoring their own industry. Challenges of late include proposed legislation to combat whale entanglements, and a new wind farm pilot project is set to go in just two miles south of Monhegan Island. It's a tough way to make a living, and I'm all the more impressed they choose to do so in the harshest months while the rest of the state's lobstermen do so in the warmest. What do you think? Wow, it's beautiful. That's the view. If visiting coastal Maine is like going back in time, Monhegan is the poster child. We took in the view, but with the museum not yet open, we headed for the east side of the island. So we're walking the cliff trail at the top of Monhegan. These are apparently the highest cliffs in all of Maine. Yeah, when I was a kid, this is the kind of trail where the gnomes live. <laughs> the gnomes. Huh? Oh, yes, it's magical here. Are it's they always little, changing. Are they your little friends? <laughs> <laughs> is this where the trolls live? That's right under that toad's door right there. Oh, there he is right there. I see him. This little guy is a juvenile ringneck pheasant. Muriel, not finding any of the gnomes, tried to make friends with this bird, but he was having none of it. We emerged from the forest trail to find art class was in full swing, and everyone was capturing the scenes with their pads and canvases. Okay. 
Apparently the tuna are running and just offshore here, this line of boats is trying their luck. It's so nice to get off the boat and just minutes away you're in a woodland forest. <laughs> yeah. I mean this could be the middle of Oregon or something. My grandfather's brother was a painter, Junius Allen, and he... Um, I knew of him. Did you? Uh-huh, sure. Wow. So, he did a job to know of painters on Monhegan. I think there's probably one of his paintings in one of those vaults over here. Really? I wow. I think I own one also. No kidding. Oh, so, yes. So tell us about the island and the history and when did it first get populated? We go back. 6,000 years to what were called the Red Paint people. The Red Paint people, I've heard of those. Who yeah. used to come out to Monhegan and do fishing. Some of them for tuna and other things. John Smith, who we know of from that period, was the first European to come to Monhegan with two boats full of people and to make a settlement here. Ah. In 1622, um, Fishermen from Monhegan sent fish to Plymouth because the pilgrims were short on food. Interesting, because I heard they'd gone to Damaris Cove as well, looking for supplies. Not far from here. No, not far at all. I guess they would have made a few stops looking for something. Yeah. This is a museum here. It is the lighthouse, and it's a working lighthouse. Look at night and you'll see the lights on. <laughs> yes. Do you... It's owned by the Monhegan Museum, which is what all of these buildings are part of. Have you been in them? Not yet. Um, you should. <laughs> and we shall. You should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Mom. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Cheers. So we headed back down the hill and out to our little floating palace. Looking up at Manana Island in the beautiful glow of sunset, we suddenly wanted to go ashore and explore. Something we resolved to do manana. Meanwhile, check out the beautiful moonrise over Monhegan. While Muriel slept, I decided to go back to the view spot by the lighthouse and get a time lapse of what remained of the sunrise. Back aboard, I collected Muriel and we climbed aboard Manana Island to explore, something I somehow have never done despite having been here many times. Hey, buddy. Hey, bud. We've got ourselves a nice little perch here on Manana Island, an island I've looked at for years in that old painting of my great uncles that was done from Monhegan looking over to Manana. As a kid, I never wondered what was in any of these buildings, but always imagined myself walking up the boardwalk I saw on the island in the background, only to now discover that it wasn't a boardwalk at all, but a tramway like the one on Seguin Island. It was used to bring materials and supplies from the Coast Guard landing at that end to the Fog Signal Station House at that end. Established in 1855 with a large bell, it was upgraded to a Daybolt trumpet, which was set atop the only known Daybolt trumpet tower. The device used coal-fired boilers to send compressed air over a steel reed. First order Daybolt trumpets were 17 feet long. An air siren replaced it finally in 1912. This little shed housed the motor for the old tramway. Oh, they've got foot treads for the steeper part. <laughs> There's the old car. 
I have to say it was really very satisfying to close the loop on all my childhood imaginings about this place. So long, Barry. So yeah, a nice little spot here. And uh, shame to leave, but we're gonna leave. We're going to leave today around one or so and sail to the Muscle Ridge Islands, but to a different place than last year. Nice. And I'm leaning back a little bit because we are up really high. <sighs> That's right. We were just lamenting that due to circumstances, we've not been back to Europe in a couple of years. So in honor of those great tours, we'll leave you with my tune, Amarabli Waltz. Mm -hmm.